garlic mashed potatoes, jalapeno cornbread, sweet corn on the cob, and barbecue tempeh, as well as strawberry parfait, all plant-based and gluten-free. Hi friends, welcome to Cooking Live with Lala. I'm Lala. I'm a home cook, professional baker, and plant-based eater. Whether you are also plant-based or looking to add more plants to your diet, this show is for you. Let's get cooking. We're gonna to start today with our jalapeno cornbread. I move this camera. I've already got some cornmeal measured out here. And I'm gonna add some, this is uh, Bob's Red Mill gluten-free, one-to-one -one baking flour. So this is gluten-free. If you're not gluten-free, then you can absolutely swap out regular flour for this, for this uh, cornbread. All right, so like I said, I've got the corn uh, cornmeal already here. We're actually going to make some. Ooh. We're going to make some buttermilk. I've got some regular plant based milk here, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm just going to let this sit until I'm ready for it. And then I also have some egg replacer here. Um, if you like flax meal, you could use flax meal as well. I just added some water to this. I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute. This is the tiniest little bowl possible to mix something in and probably not the best idea. All right, let's just move that over there. We're gonna add all of our dry, uh, dry ingredients together. All right. The recipe for this will be in the show notes at the bottom after the show is over. This is a really good cornbread recipe, guys. If you love cornbread the way that I do, it's fluffy, it's cakey. Um, I like to add jalapenos to it because I like it to be a little spicy, but you could definitely leave the jalapenos out. I've got a little bit of sugar because I like mine sweet. It's not, it's really not a lot. Some people add much more sugar than I do. And this is our baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Gonna mix this together. And then we're gonna add our wet ingredients. I don't know why I have butter smear. Okay. I'm gonna pour in my buttermilk mixture that I made. actually coconut oil and butter that I've melted. I'm going to put it my egg replacer in. And let's give that a mix. You could do this in your KitchenAid if you'd rather. Honestly, I don't bring out my KitchenAid unless I have like a, something big to make, like a cake or something. Something that's just like a minute of stirring, I'm not gonna break out my KitchenAid for that. Cause honestly, who wants to clean that? Not me. Okay. So I also bought some fresh jalapenos for this. The problem with this, the problem with jalapenos in general is that 
you never know what kind of spice you're going to get from it. Is it going to be spicy or is it going to be like these, which actually taste like green peppers, green bell peppers, not spicy at all. So I have some just like store-bought uh, jalapenos. This says that they're hot. I'm going to cut some of these up and add them in as well. And then I'm going to save a few to put on the top because it's just pretty like that. Hi, Sydney. So nice to see you. Hi, Duff Trip. You know, the fun thing about this is I can't tell how many people are watching, and that's kind of cool. No, it says four people. Yay, hi, four people. Um, Is there an Emily out there or a Lily? Super curious. Who's here? Actually, it makes me feel a lot better to know that my family's here. I love you guys so much. For real people, I have the best family in the world. I am the most blessed person on this planet because of my family. Not even lying. All right, I'm just going to chop these up. And I'm going to throw all this in my cornbread. Like I said, you do definitely do not have to put jalapenos in this. Another great mix-in that I like is corn. Sometimes I'll throw a cup of corn in here. Uh, I just like that my cornbread to have a little bit of texture, you know? Let me know in the comments, guys. Do you guys like cornbread? Do you hate cornbread? Do you like it sweet, not sweet? All right, guys, that's everything. I preheated my oven to 400 degrees and I've got a cast iron pan in there. All right. Yeah, so I heated this guy up. I'm gonna add some butter to that pan. The cast iron pan is going to give it uh, more of a crispy texture on the outside so that when you bite into it, it has a little bite, like it's biting you back. That's stupid, but it really does work. If you don't like to use cast iron, that's fine. You could totally use an eight or nine inch cake pan or eight or nine inch like square glass baking pan, any of those will work. Just be sure to grease them ahead of time. You can even heat them up ahead of time if you want, but they're not going to give you the same crispy outer texture as the cast iron will. So I'm just going to swirl this around a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear that sizzling sound. And I'm just going to pour my cornbread into this, into this pan. Um, I'm not sure why, but this is too thick. I don't know. I feel like I forgot something. Oh, well, this is the beauty of live TV. We will see what happens. I saved these little guys to put on the top just to make it look cute. This usually cooks in 25 to 30 minutes. get our tempe going now. So I'm using this Life Light tempe. Tempe is actually soybeans. My scissors are missing. These are fermented soybeans. 
They have a lot of protein. For those of you who are always wondering, how do vegans and plant-based people get their protein? There's not going to be any problems finding protein in this meal. Sydney says she loves cornbread with uh, sweet with chunks of corn in it. That makes sense because you're my child and how I always cooked it. Anyways, this is what tempeh looks like. Um, it honestly it just looks like soybeans all melted together in one little brick. So I'm just going to show you how I, cu how I cut it. Uh, but you can cut it any way that you like. You don't have to do it the way that I do it. One of the things about this channel is I'm really hoping that you guys can learn to make things the way that you like them. You could cut them in little squares like this, or they're not squares, the rectangles. You could cut little rectangles like this if you wanted. That will have a lot of sides covered with barbecue sauce, which is nice. And the way that I did it for this recipe is kind of just like big triangles. I like tempeh a lot. I'm thrilled to eat like two big squares of tempeh or two big triangles. Anyways, I have some tempeh that I marinated overnight. So I marinated this in a barbecue sauce that I made. Due to time constraints, I am not sharing the recipe today, but it will be on a future, a future video. But you guys can use any barbecue sauce that you like, you know? For me, um, you know, when I look at barbecue sauces in the store, I find a lot of barbecue sauces where sugar is the first ingredient, or even worse, high fructose corn, corn syrup is the first ingredient. I'm not a fan of that. I'm looking for all the flavors of barbecue sauce. Yeah, I like it to be a little bit sweet and a lot spicy, but what I really don't like is for sugar to be the first ingredient, so I do make my own. Um, there's no judgment here. You guys should use whatever works for you. I want your lives to be easy. I want you to be able to eat healthy, but I also want your lives to be easy, so you guys should use what works for you. All right. I already have my oven preheated, obviously. I have it preheated to 400 because I have cornbread in there. Um, you know, I usually use these silicone baking sheets to cook with. It helps me from having to clean pans. It helps me from having to use as much oil. I do generally try to keep my diet lowish in oil. Not completely. I'm not SOS free. But honestly, if you are SOS free, I'm pretty sure all of my recipes can be adapted. But for today, I'm actually going to put it on parchment paper because the problem with the silicone baking sheets is that they have trouble. It's, it's harder to brown food on them. And I definitely want this to get brown today. So these are the pieces that I marinated overnight. They are quite large for sure. Ooh, I got a broken one. What is SOS? SOS is um, sugar, oil, and salt, or salt, oil, and sugar free. A lot of, seems like quite a bit of the plant-based community is SOS free. I am not SOS free. I am, I would call myself SOS light. I didn't put a timer on for my, uh, how long ago did I put in my cornbread? <laughs> okay. I forgot to put the timer on, on my cornbread. Let's just talk about nerves and anxiety for a second, okay? I've been 
cooking my whole life. I don't have problems cooking in front of people. I'm pretty sure, pretty secure in my, you know, my recipes and all of that. Not that I don't screw up sometimes. Trust me, I totally screw. The other day I burnt uh, packaged cookies. You know, the kind, the refrigerator cookies that you just put on. Yeah, I burnt them. Totally, totally bad. Anyways, nerves and anxiety. I am so nervous. And I think it's okay for me to say that I'm nervous. You know, maybe it's America or something, but we hide our feelings so much in this country all the time. We hide our feelings. It's so crazy. I don't want to hide my feelings. I'm nervous. I am super nervous about this, but I'll tell you what, it is 416 and I feel less nervous than I did 16 minutes ago. And that's an okay thing. Anyways. So I've got my, um, my tempeh on parchment paper. And since my, you know, normally I would cook this a little bit lower, but since I have cornbread in there, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in on 400. I'm going to do it for 10 minutes. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to put some more barbecue sauce on it. And then I'm going to cook the other side. You know, the worst thing about being nervous on something like this is it's sometimes you just forget your thoughts or maybe something you've done a hundred times. Suddenly you kind of forget to do it. Like put a timer on for my cornbread. I did not put the timer on. I'll still be okay. It'll still be fine. I can figure it out. I am a professional baker. I know how long to cook these things. Even without a timer, I can figure it out. But, you know, also, you know, if you're a little kid out there and you get nervous about stuff, it's okay to be nervous. Even adults get nervous. I'm 54 years old and I'm nervous right now. Totally nervous. And that's okay. I'm still going to do it. Um, but, you know, I just want you to know it's okay. Moving on. All right. The next thing we are doing is, okay, potatoes. I have potatoes already started. <laughs> We're making mashed potatoes. We're making garlicky mashed potatoes today. I am using Yukon Gold potatoes. You could use russets as well. I like the Yukon Golds because I don't have to peel them. There's a lot of nutrients in the outer skin of the potato. And um, I don't mind the skin on the Yukon Gold. I do mind the skin on the russets. I would probably want to peel those. The russets actually make a really good mashed potato. They get nice and creamy. Um, as well as the Yukon Gold. In my experience, at least where I live, the russets are cheaper. They're about half the price of the Yukon Gold. They're, they're pretty expensive potatoes. Sometimes they're not even available. Anyways, I started them in cold water. They tend to cook better when you start them in cold water, so they're going to take a little while to cook. Emily Butts. Hi, Emily. So nice to see you. Hi. Lily, you there? Hi, Lily. Um, so anyways, potatoes are cooking, started them in cold water. Um, usually once they start boiling, it's about 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, we're going to get our corn started next. All right. I know it seems really simple to, uh, cook corn on the cob, on a show. Like, why do we need to cook corn on the cob? Doesn't everybody know how to cook corn on the cob? The fact is everybody does not know how to cook corn on the cob. Let's just start with picking corn. Hopefully you can see this well, but these are little, tiny little kernels of white and light yellow. When I look at this corn, I know that it's going to be sweet. This is the corn that I'm looking for when I pick it out at the store. If I see something with like the larger kernels, I'm not going to pick that. That's going to be they're going to be tough kernels and they're not going to be as sweet. So this is what we're going for. And let me just ask a question while we're on the subject of corn. Do you shuck your corn in the grocery store? I'm always so curious about the people who shuck their corn. Like, I don't do that. When I'm at the grocery store, I want to get in and out. But there's always these people, they're like blocking the whole corn area, shucking their corn. Like you can't go in and pick a piece of corn because all the shuckers are taking up all the area. And I'm just like so curious, like, why are you shucking corn at, home, at the store? I don't want to be there longer than I need to be there, but I don't.
don't know. I'm just curious. No judgment. This is definitely like for me, a judgment free zone. I'm just curious why you guys do the things that you do. Sydney says she shucks at, at home and she super sucks at cooking corner. <laughs> Hi, Lily. <laughs> All right. So we've got this beautiful, delicious corn. I personally like for corns to be cut in half. Turning my water on so we can start getting heated up. So I'm going to cut my corn in half. I honestly much prefer a half piece of corn as to a full piece. Please be very careful if you're going to cut your corn in half. Use a heavy duty knife. If it's young, it should cut pretty easily. Um, sometimes it doesn't cut easily. So in that case, I'll kind of dig my knife in a little bit and then I will just break it in half and it should cut pretty easily. This has got a little funky nub at the end. I'm just going to cut that off. All right. And then the pan it goes. I'm going to add some salt to this water. Actually, I'm going to pour out some of this water because there's too much in here. All right. I am adding salt to this. I want the water salted. I'm sorry. I'm just old school. When you boil things, your water should be salted. I don't know what to tell you. I can taste the difference. Maybe you can't taste the difference. That's great. Wow, oh, my hair looks so funky. Can I just tell you that I curled my hair with this curling device? I've only used like once or twice before, but it's more like a medieval torture tool. Like it doesn't have the clip that like the old school clip but you have to like weave your hair into a hole with an opening. Then you have to press a button. It might go backwards. It might go forwards. Either way, it's probably going to hurt you. It's crazy. This is the last time I used that. Somebody put, give me a reminder to buy a curling iron this week. Okay. I'm just cleaning up my work area real quick. I don't know about you guys, but I really like to cook in a clean work environment. How about you guys? It's just kind of distracting if there's a lot going on. All right. Emily wants to know why I cut them and have you gotten hurt like that before? Are you talking about um, how I gotten hurt with the curling iron before? Um, I used it today, but I also used it last week. When I used that curling iron last week, I'm pretty sure it almost murdered me twice. So my hair got caught in it. I started screaming. My mouth was foaming. I'm just kidding. I'm kind of a super ridiculous person. If I keep doing this channel, which I will, you'll probably notice that. Emily wants to know why I cut the corn. I actually like to eat like the little pieces. That way I know I, I'm not taking more than I need. Also for those people who take food and don't eat it, it's a little bit less wasteful. All right, so we've got the cornbread in, we've got the tempeh in, the potatoes are cooking, the corn's cooking, we're gonna make a parfait. Just peeking in on everything. I got a little setup area over there, so when you see me disappear, that's probably what I'm doing. Okay, guys, there is not going to be a recipe for this parfait. This is super easy. Anybody could do it. Children can do it. Children should do it because it's probably one of the healthiest desserts that you can eat. It's freaking delicious. Ooh. Just thought of something else I should add to it. We're making parfaits, guys. So I bought these cute little glasses for a parfait. 
Um, when I tested this recipe, I used this guy. This is the guy in the, the little the picture. Uh, this is serious, like a seriously big wine glass. I sometimes I think that this might hold a whole bottle of wine. I've never tested it, but it's really big. This one is much better. It's probably like an eight ounce glass. We're going to go with this guy. All right. So what is a parfait? For today, a parfait is going to be um, yogurt. I'm using a coconut yogurt. It's what I like. And I'm using strawberries. And I'm layering that with some granola. So in this parfait recipe, you guys could use, you could use yogurt. That's going to make it a little healthier. You could also use ice cream. Who wouldn't like some ice cream layered with strawberries and granola? I got two glasses. Um, like I said last week, I used this wine glass, but for today, I, I picked these up at the thrift store because, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a minimalist. I don't like to have too much extra stuff. And so I went and bought these two. I think they cost me like under $3 for the two of them. So I'm just going to put some yogurt in the bottom. And I'm going to do some granola on top. Oops. This is granola that I made. You guys can make your own granola, you can buy granola, whatever you'd rather do. You know, we all lead busy lives and if you need to buy granola, then buy granola. I'm not sharing this granola recipe today, but I will in the future. This is from a fellow YouTuber. And for real, I've been making granola my whole entire life, like for years. I saw this woman's granola recipe a couple months ago. She made it. And then when it came out of the pan, she broke off this like giant chunk of it. And I was like, that's a granola for me. I stopped everything that I was doing and I got up and made the recipe right there and then. And I was hooked. So I'm going to do a breakfast uh, breakfast show in the, probably the next month. And I'm going to feature the granola as well. And I'll leave a link to her channel so that, you know, I want her to get credit for her great recipe. All right. So, so far I've got some yogurt in here. I've got some granola in here. Just cut a couple strawberries. Do you guys store your produce in jars? I just keep seeing everybody talking about store your produce in jars. It lasts for weeks. So this is the first time I'm trying it with strawberries. We'll see what happens. I can already see an ugly guy in there. I'm not sure that he was ugly yesterday, so I don't know. I'm just going to cut these in slices. You guys can use an array of uh, fruit here. This would be good with blueberries. This would be fantastic with raspberries. I would really like that. I think you could probably use any fruit out there. If it sounds like it'd be good with yogurt, then it would probably be good in this recipe. All right, let's just layer some strawberries in there. Some more yogurt. And if you like this a little sweet, you could take your yogurt out ahead of time, add some maple syrup or agave, whatever sweetener you like. You could add a little bit of vanilla if you wanted to, to pump up the flavor of the yogurt.
Do children need supervision? <laughs> uh, Emily, that's probably the best question I've ever seen in any YouTube chat of my whole entire life. My answer would be, it depends on the child. And yes, probably most children need supervision. Or do you mean supervision when making this? Uh, some kids might need supervision cutting strawberries. But other than that, I'm pretty sure this is a great recipe for kids. Let's leave this guy out. Okay. I'm going to do a tiny little third layer. Let me check on what's happening behind me. My corn is cooked for five minutes. Five minutes is the amount of minutes that it takes corn to cook. Once it's boiling, set your timer on five minutes, turn it off, that's it. You could leave it in the pot, it doesn't matter, but five minutes is all it takes. So I've turned that off, taking it off the stove. I'm gonna turn this tempeh over. I'm gonna add a little more barbecue sauce to the top of this tempeh. It goes back in for 10 minutes. All right, back to this parfait. All right, so we're almost at the top. You guys can see that. I'm gonna add a little bit more granola. Gonna make a big mess in the meantime. Oh, I have so many strawberries left over. That's because I, did I forget the middle layer of strawberries? I don't know, whatever. Let's just put some strawberries on the top. You know guys, food doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to taste good. If you mess something up, that's okay. Just move on like I am. I'm gonna put a little bit of cacao nibs on the top. They are, this is what cocoa comes from and chocolate comes from. Just ground up into little, little pieces. They're unsweetened. And I love them. They're full of antioxidants. This is a good point to say that I'm not a medical professional and nothing I ever say should be misconstrued as medical advice. All right, and here we go. Beautiful little parfait. You can make it the way that you like. You can add more strawberries. You can add other fruit. You can add ice cream instead. You could do other mix-ins. You could do chocolate chips. You could do nuts. You could do seeds. You could do a million things with this. This is basically breakfast in a beautiful cup. So there we go. I'm gonna clean up for a minute. I'm going to eat these strawberries so they don't go to waste.
All right. So we are waiting on the cornbread. We are waiting on the mashed potatoes. Uh, we're waiting on the tempeh. So the corn on the cob is cooked and the parfait is done. We have two minutes left on the cornbread, maybe, since I didn't set a timer, we'll check it for Dennis and we'll see. Tempeh is definitely, the tempeh is easy. It cooks very simply. You could have pan fried it as well if that's what you prefer to do. The big mystery is gonna be the mashed potatoes. So we're cooking the mashed potatoes until they're fork tender. That's the best for mashed potatoes. Do you guys make mashed potatoes? Do you like mashed potatoes? Is there anybody who doesn't like mashed potatoes? That's the real question that I'd like to know. Let's see. Let me read some comments. Um, Emily, you're really, really great on the chat. I hope to see you again. Emily loves strawberries. N says my food looks amazing. Def Trip says yummy with a dragon. I don't know what that is. It's very cute though. Cornbread beeped, we're gonna check it. Let me see. All right. Cornbread definitely looks better in person than on this camera. Um, this is the toothpick test. I don't use toothpicks, so I'm gonna use this knife. You just kind of put it in the middle. And if it comes out clean, it's done. And this is clean. So we're going to call the cornbread done and let it rest for a few minutes. We're waiting on tempeh and mashed potatoes and that's it. did bring a couple things to talk about, some kind of like talking points. Let's see, what have I missed? We actually talked about almost everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was leaving reviews for recipe creators online. If you're watching the show, there's a really good chance that you've looked up recipes online. Now, when we look at recipes, what do we look for? We look for that five star rating, right? If it has one, two, three stars, we're probably going to not even open the web page, right? If it has somewhere between four and five stars, we're going to open it. And I would almost guarantee that most people just go straight to the recipe and start making it. It has five stars. It's obviously a great recipe. We're going to go for it. This is going to be good. I'm sorry to tell you that five stars does not mean it's a good recipe at all, literally. So what do I do when I open a recipe that's new for me? I scroll down to the comments and what do I see right off the bat? I see so many comments that say almost exactly this. Wow, looks amazing. Can't wait to try it, five stars. What? You didn't even try the recipe. How can you give it five stars when you haven't even tried the recipe? You have to keep reading the reviews. Then you're gonna see reviews like this. Oh, I tried to make it, it didn't work out well. It just didn't work. So I substituted this and changed this and then I did this and then it worked, five stars. That's also not five stars. So the first person who hasn't tried the recipe shouldn't be leaving any stars. The second person who tried the recipe and fixed it should probably be maybe leaving two, three, four stars, depending on how bad it actually was. It's really important to read the comments, guys. That's where you're gonna find out if the recipe works at all. I highly recommend reading the comments. And then once you've read the comments, then you decide, can I make this recipe or not? Is it gonna work for me? How great is it? 
If you never made the recipe, please don't leave a review or, or specifically stars. Don't leave stars if you haven't tried the recipe. You're kind of screwing up the rating system for the rest of us. The rating system is really important. And have you ever noticed that almost all recipes have five stars? There's a reason for that. Let's check everything again. So the tempeh looks really good. I've taken it out, turned off the oven. I don't know if you can see it, but it's nice and barbecuey. This is going to be super delicious. I'm really excited about this recipe. I actually really love tempeh. If you guys have never had it, I recommend trying it. Some people think that tempeh can be a little bit bitter, so you might consider steaming it or boiling it for 10 minutes before you put it into your recipe. That helps. Uh, kind of break up that flavor profile of bitterness that most of us really don't like that much. And let's check these potatoes. This is the last thing we're waiting on. Uh, the truth is that I meant to start the potatoes about 10 minutes earlier than I did. So we're going to have to see how this works. That's not ready. So I think we should plate what we have uh, while we wait for the mashed potatoes. I have this cool plate that I've never used before. I'm gonna plate with us today. All right. Is that a piece of corn? You guys, when your corn is young and sweet, it really doesn't need anything. Sometimes I eat it just plain, just like that. Sometimes I add a tiny bit of salt to it. We could do a whole show on corn. There's so many different toppings that people use. There's some really great Mexican recipes with corn. But like I said, if your corn is young and sweet, it doesn't really need anything. Let's uh, try out this cornbread too. What kind of butter would I use on my cornbread? Can we get a close-up of the tempeh? Sure, in just a minute. All right, the sky is, it's a little bit hot to be taken out. He wants to fall apart. I like to let things cool down a little bit more than this usually, but I'm actually super excited to try this. So what kind of butter would I use? Um, I'm plant-based. I do not use dairy products. Uh, which one am I using today? Let's see. Oh, yeah. I have um, country crock plant butter for today. Miyoko's makes a super great plant butter. This, but it's, have you guys noticed how expensive butter is getting? This was pretty pricey for me, six, around $6 or something like that. You know, country crock, let me tell you this. Country crock, Miyoko's is better. If you raise your prices this high, I'm just going to have Miyoko's. FYI. Just saying. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm eating the cornbread. Cornbread's probably a top ten five, uh, top ten food for me. Man, it's really good. It's got that little crunch on the outside. I don't know if you guys think about textures when you cook. Some people really love everything being one texture. I'm kind of not a fan of that. I like to have a variety of textures in my mouth. I just put my tongue. So this cornbread kind of has like a tougher exterior. It's really nice, actually. Mm. Can I just end the show and eat cornbread? Because this is really good. <coughs> I got a piece of jalapeno in the back of my throat. <laughs> I think it kind of sat there for a second. All right, somebody asked for a close-up of the tempeh. <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. It's just kind of like little tempeh pod pieces. And honestly, if you've never had tempeh before, maybe you're a little nervous about trying. Tempeh has a pretty kind of neutral flavor. Um, usually when I cook tempeh, I either do barbecue sauce with it or I use it in Asian foods. It works really well with all the kind of Asian sauces. I'm not going to uh, plate that yet. All right. This, these potatoes are cooked. So the last part of our meal that we need to make is our mashed potatoes. That's hot. Why do they make pans with hot handles? Does anybody know the answer to that? I'd love to know the answer to that. Oh. Potatoes are cooked and drained. All right. To them, I am adding a, a half of stick of butter. This is one quarter cup. You do not have to use butter. If you'd prefer, you could use a vegan sour cream. You could use olive oil. You could use avocado. I have used avocado in my mashed potatoes. My recommendation is to keep it to half an avocado because if you use too much avocado, it turns green and then it tastes too much like avocado. And then you get super confused because you're like, is this mashed potatoes or is this guacamole? Your brain literally gets so confused. Trust me. I've been there. I've tried this. All right. So I've got a kind of surprise ingredient. I am using horseradish in my mashed potatoes. It gives it a kick. I kind of like foods with a kick. I like my foods to be very flavorful. Sometimes things can be simple like the sweet corn on the cob, but sometimes I need things to have more flavor. So that's why I'm using this horseradish. I find it very hard to get uh, like a horseradish root. This is what I really wanted to use was horseradish root. I couldn't find it anywhere around me. This is prepared horseradish. And I would just recommend, you know, if you are an ethical vegan, be careful buying this because they do tend to have egg whites. Um, I think it's probably a stabilizer or something. I'm not really sure. And then here's where the garlicky part comes in. 
This is a roasted garlic head. I'm gonna put the whole entire thing in these potatoes. Uh, these cook on 400 for about 30 to 40 minutes. Look how beautiful that is. All you have to do is cut, just cut a little bit of the top off, sprinkle some olive oil, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt is what I like to use. You don't have to use salt. And you just let it roast. Oh, um, I put mine in parchment paper so the outside doesn't burn and the inside cooks better. You could also use tinfoil. Some of these little garlics come out better than the others, so it's messy, guys. It's worth it, but it's messy. Um, I made this this uh, roasted garlic the other day. If it was fresh out of the oven, it would actually squeeze out a little better, but it doesn't want to squeeze out today. So I have to bust them all open. I think we're gonna have a taster on our video today. Hopefully. All right. a five pound bag of potatoes for this recipe. You should definitely use the amount that works for you. I am not going to give you a recipe for mashed potatoes. You know, if there's one thing I would like people to learn from this channel, it's how to make things on the fly. You don't need a recipe for everything. You don't need a recipe for mashed potatoes. You cook the potatoes, you add seasonings that you like, you add oils that you like, uh, whatever flavors that you like, you mash them and that's done. You don't need a recipe. I'm going to pour in about half a cup of this plant milk. I am using creamy cashew. This is unsweet. I would be really careful about which plant milks you use. Uh, something that was sweet would not be good in potatoes and something that has vanilla would also not be good in potatoes. So I want to choose something that's not sweet, not flavored, and something creamy. That's why I choose cashew. Oat milk could also be good in this. Soy milk can be a little weird. I'd be careful about adding soy milk to your potatoes. But honestly, do what works for you. I don't have my masher. Oh, my God. Peeling garlic is always worth it. That is so true. Where do I buy my ingredients? Uh, so I, I go to a variety of grocery stores. This week I've been to Whole Foods, I've been to Sprouts, I've been to King Supers. Um, those are kind of like the biggest grocery stores in my area. Oh, I've been to Safeway. I probably buy the majority of my groceries from King Supers. Whole Foods is very pricey. Sprouts is fantastic. I love to go to Sprouts for our produce. They, they really just have the best produce in my area. I generally don't shop at Walmart. That's just kind of a, I don't know, decision I've made based on how they, how they treat their employees. This is not a political channel, so I'm not going to get into that too much. All right. The only thing I haven't done is added any seasonings to this. Uh, these potatoes would be really, really great with some rosemary in them. I found out yesterday that I'm out of rosemary and I forgot to buy it. So like a teaspoon of rosemary would be fantastic in this.
If you use other ingredients for your potatoes, let me know. I'm gonna put in like a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this milk. You know, by the way, guys, you do not have to use a potato masher like this. Some people like to use a ricer that makes super fine and creamy potatoes. I kind of like my potatoes to have little chunks in it, so I prefer like a potato masher like this. I would be careful of using a, like a blender or something because that can really just make it kind of too glutinous and not so bright. All right, let's give this a taste. Wow. So I used about two tablespoons of horseradish that hit me right up front. Horseradish right in my face. So good. Super creamy. Um, seasoning's perfect. You have to be careful if you're doing horseradish and garlic that the horseradish does not overtake the garlic because that could happen easily. Let's, let's finish plating. All right, I need a big fat serving of mashed potatoes, guys. Let me know if you guys think mashed potatoes are like one of the greatest foods on the planet. Emily says that the cornbread looks amazing on camera. <laughs> Tempeh looks great, just like real meat. Can you use teriyaki sauce? Um, if you have teriyaki sauce, you could totally make the tempeh exactly the same, but with teriyaki, it would be fantastic. My next live, I'm going to talk about that soon. Peeling garlic is always worth it. You know, uh, I am never going to be unhappy with people that use cheater garlic. For me, I don't like the cheater garlic. I can, I can really taste the difference. It, it just really doesn't have that vibrant garlic flavor to me as much as like fresh garlic. So you'll always see me using real garlic, but honestly, I'm telling you, you use what works for you. Okay. Life is hard. We're all busy. And if you're trying to be plant-based on top of it or add more just plants to your diet, seriously, people use what works for you. How long I've been cooking? How much time do you have? <laughs> All right, let's finish plating this food. Dude, how good does that look? Seriously, I know we have a lot of like kind of tan and white foods going on here, but this is gonna be so good. I'm super excited to try this. I do have a helper slash producer in the house, the his house. Any chance I can get a death trip over here to give a little taste? Hi, how are you? Good, can't wait. There's a fork for you. Come on in, Stop come on into the screen. Let's, uh, I'm gonna hold this up. Let's take some bites. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think. Mm. Excuse me. I'm using my finger. I actually think the potatoes could use a tiny bit more salt, but still really, really good. Mm. I love the mashed potatoes. Mm. Hi, guys. <laughs> Can you see this corn, guys? It is cooked perfectly. It's crispy. It's sweet. It's wonderful. Lovely. Tempeh is awesome. You like the tempeh? Mm -hmm. mm. I love it. It's all so good. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody getting hungry? Me. You, you're, I'm going to hand you this plate in a second and you good. can just keep eating it. Here you go. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't let the food roll off because I'm pretty sure like that corn could just roll off that plate. Bye. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I wish you could be here to smell it, to taste it. It's also very, very good. The best part for me, it's five o'clock. I just finished cooking dinner in one hour and now I don't have to cook anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching the show tonight. This was my first show and I'm just so grateful for everyone who joined in. If you liked this comment, please like, subscribe, share. I'm a new channel. I'm going to need any help that I can get. Next week on Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, we are cooking uh, street tacos. Street tacos with a quick slaw and an avocado crema. And I'm going to make no oil chips along with a pico de gallo. And we're going to have margaritas. Thanks guys so much. I'm so grateful you were here. We'll see you next week.